So Blender Savages, today I'm going to show you how to make a low poly horse. Then after you make it, you can uh, duplicate it, scale it down, make a little horse buddy. And you can even bring in an HDR, HDRI file for the background. Get you a nice looking scene there. Let's see, there you go. There we go, a nice country scene. That looks nice. All right. Uh, so we're not going to use a cube for that. I'm going to delete it. X key delete. And for me to trace this horse, I am going to need a reference. I need something to use to trace it. There's this cool website. <clears throat> it's called the-blueprints.com. That's a plural right there. The-blueprints.com. It has blueprints for all kinds of stuff. Uh, vehicles, uh, fictional or, no, or, or, real, or real actual vehicles science fiction vehicles, even uh, Star Wars stuff, Formula One cars. So look, there's a uh, Lightning McQueen, the Tesla truck, you get blueprints for that as well. So you get all the views, top view, side view, front, rear. So I'm gonna look for a horse here because you also have animals as well. It's an awesome website. All right, so I'm gonna go with this one right here, horse, three view, and basic proportion. There's a picture of a horse right there. You can buy it for 13 euros or uh, use 10 credits there. I'm just gonna literally just copy and, copy and paste it over to Blender. Just save it right here. Right click, save image as. Well, not copy and paste it, but I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it on my desktop. Cool, and give it a name, three point horse. All right, and then save. All right, so that's on my desktop. I'll be able to, I'll be able to access it later. Uh, but you can find other stuff in here too, like military things. Military. There you go. So there's some Jeeps. A uh, plane there. Let me type in tank. Let's see. There you go. There's a tank there. There's some other tanks. You get the blueprints for that. Planes, of course. No resorts for plane. Oh, did I miss both planes? Planes. Plane. There we go. And there we go. Airplanes. I guess I should have typed in airplanes. That's what they wanted. Boats. You can see there's boats there. Submarines. All that stuff. No results found for boats. All right. Whatever. Back over here to Blender. I'm going to bring in that image. Uh, depending on what view I'm in, it'll bring it in with respect to that view. So I'm in Shift A. I'm going to go to Image. And I'm going to go with Reference here. Let me go to Desktop. And the image is right here, three point horse. All right, so I brought it in the strange view. So now if I move around, see it's not exactly flat. It won't for front view, doesn't look good there. Three for right view, doesn't look good. Except for top view, doesn't look good. So I'm gonna delete it. Uh, since I'm gonna trace it from the right side of the horse, I'm at three for right view, three on the number pad for right view. Remember to always have a number lock on, on, your, uh, on your keyboard. So now I'll bring it in here from right view. Shift A, mesh, and you can bring it in as either reference or background. You bring it as a background, you can only see it while you're in that view. See, there it is. I'm gonna change my view. Now it's gone. It's still there, but I can only see it in right view. See, there it is. One for front view, it's kind of there. Never for top view, three for right view. Tilt the camera a bit, can't see it. So if you want to keep it there, uh, visible from all those other angles, you're gonna to want to bring it in as a reference. And there it is. See that one kind of just stays there. And you bring other ones for the uh, for the rear and the front here. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have the front of the uh, the front of the face of the horse. It's cut off there, or the back of the head here, the neck, or the top of the horse. But this is good enough. We're just going to use uh, this right side here to trace. If you were to trace the other parts, you would uh, bring in other ones as well. I'll show you guys here an example. Shift A, image reference. All right, so that's the front view. And let's say you wanted to get the front of the horse there. So like this one, GX, just move it over until you get the horse there. There we go, GX, uh, right in the center. So you would trace it from there, GY, get over where the legs are at. So you'd do something like that. <clears throat> that's usually for like a car. But for this horse, we're okay with this. Then I'm gonna bring in a plane, Shift A, Mesh plane. There we go. 
there's my plane in here. It's occupying the same it's occupying the same space as the image. So I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna flip it over along the y axis 90 degrees, so it's flat here, R Y90 enter. And there we go. In the same space there, that's okay. Three for right view. Now I'm gonna go to edit mode so I can use this plane to trace my horse. Tab key, take it edit mode. There we go. And now I'm gonna activate the wireframe, shift Z. Here we go. If for some reason you can't go into edit mode, that's because of the um, you don't have the plane selected. All right, I got something else going on here. I want to be able to see through the through the plane, so I'm gonna select my plane. I went back to object mode, select the plane. Now I'm gonna go over here to this image icon and the properties panel. I'm gonna activate use alpha right here. So I went back to object mode, selected the plane, select the use uh, use alpha. Now I can see through it. See, now I can see the grid in the background, and I can make it a little more transparent as well. So I'll leave that up, but I'll just uh, activate use alpha there. Cool. So now I'm gonna select my plane. Let me get my plane. I'll just select the plane from here. There we go. All right. I'll tap key for edit mode. There we go. All right. So now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna position one of these corners. One of the corners here on the horse, on the horse's back. So I have everything selected here. I'm saying G for grab. Put that corner there. Right there where it looks like the tail's about to start. Uh, let's go. Actually, yeah, let's go right there, that high point on the back. All right, so now I'm going to select this one here. I just left click that one individually. G for grab. I'm going to go down on the slope here somewhere. Left click there. Cool. All right, so I'm going to select this one here. G for grab, and I'm going to tuck it in right here. Right where the uh, legs are to protrude. I'm going to select this one here. G for grab. I'm going to pull it up and I'll put it around there. There we go. So I got that part traced out and that segment there. So I'm going to start extruding out this way to get the rest of the body, not the legs, just the, the body here, the neck, and the head. So instead of extruding one vertex at a time, I'm going to select the two on the left. So I'm just doing drag selection there. Hold on the left mouse button, drag across. I need to extrude. And you want one of the uh, one of the vertices here to line up with the uh, end of the horse, with one of the uh, outlines of the horse. See that one lines up. This one doesn't. It's okay. I can just select it there. G for grab, and there we go. And make sure you have both selected every time you extrude. Extrude. And I guess I can go right there. Looks good. Bring this one up a bit. G for grab. There we go. Because if you're just extruding one at a time, make sure here. You just get in this dot here. And then later you have to go and draw in the geometry for that part there. Then also, I just went over to solid viewport shader. These are faces. These are not faces. These are empty. Then later you have to go in and fill in those faces. And then you have to keep track that these, uh, that these add up. So please make sure to, to extrude two vertices at a time. And you're following this continuous flow where this left edge just kind of keeps flowing out in this direction out into the mouth. E to extrude. That'll come in handy later because we're going to add a loop cut. We're going to add a loop cut through here to try to widen up our horse, make it a little more rounder. It is low poly, but the effect will look better if it's less blocky. It doesn't look like a big, chunky cookie cutter. Need to extrude. And see, I'm just extruding two at a time. I'm holding the shift key, dragging this one there. And for this part here, I'm going to extrude just so it's long enough to have one edge there for the entire leg so I can extrude, it, so I can extrude a leg from there later. There we go. So I want one solid edge right there. No vertex in the middle so I can extrude an edge from there, from that edge. All right, select this one here, G for grab. Put it up over here on the neck. There we go. E to extrude. About there. This one's too high. Bring that one down, G for grab. All right. E to extrude, bam. See, this one keeps going up, but it's okay. You can just bring it down. There we go. E to extrude. So I'm just following everything along. Oops, I suddenly hit caps lock. G for grab, there we go. E to extrude. And I guess we'll go right there. There we go. Pull this one up some more. There we go. And notice how uh, the continuous flow right here, this left edge, just kind of keeps going out. 
in this direction that one there bring this one up over here and i'm not going to worry about the ears right now i'll do that later towards the end just want to get the main body of the horse right now and right there g for gram i need to extrude i'm just going to bypass that part right there which i guess i could kind of get some of it there g for gram e to extrude and there we go bring this one down and um, these are uh, number of edges over here. They don't have to match mine. It could be a little bit off. Uh, what you want to worry about is this right here. It should just be one edge from the beginning and end of that leg there for the protrusion of that leg. E to extrude, bam. There we go. And the trait doesn't have to be perfect. See, I'm a little bit off there. A little bit off there. Doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be uh, like an approximation, right? All right, bring that down. This one, bring it down. And then one more here, E to extrude. There we go. G for grab. And something like that. There we go. Cool. Maybe I'll bring this one out over here some more. So I can just, I can still go back and make adjustments. There we go. I want this to be a little more noticeable here. There you go. So it went out a little bit. Cool. All right, so I'm going to make another one back here. And I'm going to make sure it's long enough. Let's cover that edge there, cover the uh, that whole leg there where the leg would protrude from. I want one long edge there, E to extrude. And also for the tail, I gotta worry about that. So I'm gonna go right here. So that is edge right here is where the tail would start. So I'm gonna individually select this one, G for grab. Let's go straight out from here. And there we go. So long enough, I got one long edge for that leg extrusion there. So I'm gonna select these again, E to extrude. And now I'm doing this for the tail as well. So I want an edge here long enough for the tail to extrude. So there isn't an edge in the middle because then it's going to give me some issues later later when i model so i'm sticking way now way out so i'm going to bring it back in there we go and just one more extrusion here right there and just bring these in individually there we go bam all right that's the main body of the horse so we can go over to solid viewport shader see there we go so now I'm gonna make the horse uh, 3D. Right now that's just uh, two dimensional. Just use it to trace the main body. So I'm gonna hit A to select all, there we go. I'm going to use the mirror modifier. So I'm gonna go over here to the properties panel and go to the modifier here, add modifier and mirror. That was the blue wrench there. All right, so it's mirroring, mirroring uh, along the, uh, looks like the, the Zax here, so saying X, I think it's Y because I flipped over the uh, planar here. So I'm going to click on Y here, remove the X. Nope, it's going to have to go with Z. All right, so I don't see a mirror there. That's because it's uh, the mirrored area is in the same area, the mirrored parts in the same area as the horse body here. All right, so now I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to move it out by 0.2 blender units. I had A to select all, G, X. 0.2 enter there we go so picking it up see there's a the mirror side right there all right <clears throat> now i'm going to activate clipping now i'm going to extrude this out over here to make it 2d so activate clipping there and then e to extrude and just pull out if it's not going straight hit the x key separate the x-axis let's go all the way to the left and because i just activated clipping it's going to stick those vertices are in the middle are going to merge with the ones in the center there we go. Without clipping, there would cross over the other side. There you go. So now it's 3D. Nice thick horse. That's still blocky. We'll fix that later. All right. So I'm going to one for front view. I'm going to add a new edge in here. I'm going to use a loop cut so I can get a, a face down here to make my leg. Because if I decide to extrude a leg here from this face, it's going to be sucked to the other leg on the other side. See, it's like one fat wide leg. And we don't want that. So loop cut right here, one front view over or over the top edge or bottom edge here. Control R and then just enter two times real quick. And there's a loop edge right in the middle there. So now I'm gonna switch over to face selection. And I can select this face down here where the uh, leg would protrude from, the one on the outside. There we go. So not the middle one, because it's going to fuse with that one. So the one on the outside here, where the leg would be. So you can hit 3 for right view, so you can verify where it's at. Then the 2 on the number pad, it'll tilt it over. 
So hitting two on the number pad will tilt it over so you can see the side of it there. All right, so that face is already selected. Now I'm gonna hit three for right view. I'm gonna start extruding down. E to extrude, it's gonna go like about there. All right, so as you can see here, it looks a little wider than the leg and the angle's a little off. I want this line to kind of be straight down. I'm gonna rotate it first, I'm gonna R for rotate. I'm doing all this in right view. And I'm gonna left click right there. I'm gonna scale it down. I'm gonna scale it down along the Y axis, which is uh, forward and back, but from this view, it's gonna be left and right. It's the green line right here. There's the Y axis. So I'm gonna hit S and then Y to snap the scaling of the Y axis. That way it only gets, uh, only scales down along the Y. All right, looks about right right there. So I have to pull it over to match up with the leg. G for grab, pull it back. Left click there, maybe bring it down a little bit more. G for grab, there we go. S, Y. Doesn't have to be perfect. See, there we go. So I only scaled it down along the Y. Because if I didn't hit the, the Y, just scale down the whole thing along every axis, which is not what I want. It'll proportionally scale. All right, so I'm going to shoot again from here. Go about there. S, Y. And let me activate the wireframe. Shift Z. There we go. So I can see through the horse here. I can see the trace in the back there. E to extrude. Go about there, S, Y, G for grab, S, Y. All right, and I guess I'll shoot all the way down right there. There we go. E to extrude, S, Y, G for grab. There we go, S, Y, open up a little bit. All right, E to extrude. It's going to go straight down over there, G for grab, put it there. S, Y, G for grab, E to extrude. This bottom part here. I'm going to rotate it so it starts shooting in that direction. Oops, I didn't mean to do that extrusion, so undo there. R for rotate. G for grab there. S Y. There we go. E to extrude. Left click there. G for grab. Let's position it there. Looks like it gets a little narrow there. So S Y. G for grab right there. E to extrude. We'll go about there. S Y. G for grab, there we go, R for rotate. Now I'm gonna make the rest of the foot there. E to extrude, left click there, R for rotate. S, Y, make the little hoof there. There we go, it looks good. Shift Z, solid viewport shader. Looks good, doesn't have to be perfect. I know those uh, corners are sharp, it's low poly. Well, we'll round them out later. All right, back to solid view again, solid viewport shader. I'm gonna select this one here on the outside there. So I can extrude the, the rear leg there, the back leg. So I got the front leg there. So make sure to select the face on the outside. Three for right view. So I'm gonna hit E to extrude. About there. Activate the wireframe, Shift Z. S, Y. G for grab. S, Y. G for grab. There we go. R for rotate a little bit more. Try to flatten it out. There we go. Actually, I actually could just do that too. I'll leave it here like this. E to extrude, left click there, G for grab, pull it out, S, Y. So every time I scale along the legs, it's always S, Y, not just scale. All right. E to extrude, go out to this uh, elbow point here. It's not the, um, I don't think that's what an actual horse anatomy, I don't think they call that the elbow, to be honest. I saw an image and they called this part here the elbow on the rear leg. I don't remember what they call the elbow, if it had an elbow. E to extrude, left click there, S, Y. There we go, G for grab, put it around right there. E to extrude, straight down, about right there. G for grab, let's see. S, Y, G for grab. All right, let me rotate it a bit, start going in this direction. I'm gonna have this continuous flow, right? So that's why I'm rotating it there, just like right here at a continuous flow. Same thing. Continuous flow here. E to extrude, left click there, G for grab, S, Y, G for grab. Now rotate it a bit. E to extrude right there, S, Y, start making it wider for the hoof here. E to extrude, left click there, try to straighten out the foot here, or rotate, S, Y, and like the back part doesn't stick out much, so I'm in G for grab. 
There we go. And so I guess I could do the same thing here too. Check out the right face. Nope. Shave Z solid. And there we go. I got it there. Three for right view. G for grab. Goes forward. Z Y. There we go. Step it of the Y. Cool. And this one seems to be a little bit higher than the other one. So I'm going to G for grab. Try to put it on that line there. On that, uh, that grid mark. All right. That's good. I'll go with that. So it doesn't have to be perfect. But there we go. We got our low poly horse. Cool. All right. So the head looks really wide. So just to take a look at it, to examine it real quick, I'm going to go back to object mode. Select the plane here. Actually, say in edit mode, I can just close the eyeball here on the, on the uh, sorry, in the image. You can take a look at the horse there. I'm going to bring it back. All right. I'm going to select parts of this edge here in the center. So I want to narrow down the, the head. It looks too, too wide. So I'm going to go here to edge selection. Upper left corner edge selection. One for front view. And I'm going to select this edge here. Hold on the shift key, select these edges here. All right. Select this one. Hold on the shift key, I'm selecting the edges here along the head. The ones that go down the middle here on the original side. And this one here, part of the neck. And I think that's good. Those are on the same one. Yeah. One for front view. I'm going to move it over to the left because later I'm going to move these over too. And I don't want them to uh, touch this face here, to touch this edge here. So, how far did I move these over? I had a handout here. GX minus 0 0.08 enter. So, G for gram, X minus 0 0.08 enter. There we go. So, move them all way over there. And I'm going to select these faces here. So, I'm going to face selection. Three for right view. I'm going to select the faces here on the face. Right view. And this one here on the neck. A part of the neck there one for front view and then gx and move them inward and you don't want these to touch there see those almost touched right there so you don't want these vertices to touch because then they're going to overlap all right set for top view it's going to never know the head there cool that looks good but it can still look better so back to three for right view and i'm going to select just some of the ones here on the front and there we go maybe this one here not too far back remember this part of the horse sticks out Stand for top view. Let me zoom in there. I'm a G for grab. I'm going to go inward. Oops. G, X. There we go. And about right there. I'm going to R for rotate. Rotate it in. There we go. And make sure these do not touch there. All right. There we go. Never so tell me hide the plane here. There we go. And if you want, you can still make this wider here. You can select these here. And then hit G and just pull them out. G, X. If that's what you want to do, but I'm going to leave them narrowed down like that. All right. So my horse still looks like a cookie cutter. So it looks very blocky. This here looks kind of weird too. I'll fix that in a bit. I think I'll fix that first. So I'm going to set for top view, vertex selection. I'm going to click on this one right here. So you probably got that weird vertex there too. Set for top view. Actually, let's go with this weird view, this angle right here. I want to move it over that way. I want to keep it straight. I don't want to move it all over the place. So I'm going to snap the grab to the x-axis. So GX, pull it inward. There we go. Now I got another sharp corner there. GX, pull that one inward as well. GX, there we go. It's reducing the sharp corners. This one I'm going to pull out here. It looks like it's too far in. GX, there we go. GX, a little smoother transition. Now this one right here. GX. You know, and I did them one at a time instead of trying to grab them all at once. So grab them all at once, going to keep those sharp corners there. All right. So now my horse still looks uh, very square. So I'm going to bring in a loop cut down the middle here. So I'm going to hover over here on this left edge or at the rear. Hit Control R. There we go. And you should get a yellow line going through there. If you're up here, then you're going to get it through there perpendicular to that edge. So I want a, I want a horizontal one right here. I'm just going to hit Enter two times. There we go. Now I want one going up and down each leg. Control R right here. Enter two times. And Control R over here. Enter two times. There we go. I'm going over to edge selection. And I'm going to thicken up my horse. Three for right view. So I'm going to select this edge here at the end. Not the one at the far end. Three for right view. I want to select them all the way up into about right here. So I'm going to hold on the Control key and click on this one. 
There we go. So control will select um, uh, from the beginning point from the first click. It'll try to find a, a pathway up to your last click if you hold on control. All right, so I got those there. I can go to center for top view or one for front view and these other different views here. Now I'm going to hit GX, pull it out, make it a little wider so you can see it coming out right there. One for front view, GX. Cool. And I'll put some meat on this horse. I want to pull these out as well. GX. GX. No separate top view. Don't want the super sharp corners. Ah, that one I don't mind too much. All right. Let me pull this one out. GX. There we go. All right. So now for the legs, they look very blocky. So I'm going to select these here too. Nope. Oh, control key. There we go. I'm going to pull these out. Actually, I'm just pull these out together at the same time. I'm not going to use the control key here because I already have these selected. So if I use control, it's going to give me something weird. Oh, no, it worked. I was going to try to se select these edges here. Sometimes it does that. All right, GX. One for front view. See how it's looking there. GX. Cool. Usually horses have uh, huge rears. So if you like, you can uh, select those edges there at the back too. GX. And pull them out further. All right, let's see how it looks in front view here. There's that sharp corner there. If I don't like it, I can go to vertex selection. Make the small adjustments here. GX, pull it inward a bit. There we go. That one I'll leave there. It's part of the rear. One. And then for opposite view, whatever view you're in, hit nine on the number pad. It will give you the opposite view of that. There we go. All right, so I got some weird corners here. All right, so I'll pull this one out here. I'm in vertex selection. GX. All right. It's looking rounder there. All right. No, this one here looks kind of weird. Except for top view. GX. Oh, GX. Right there. All right. Cool. All right. So I want to. So it looks very blocky. So that did help there. Those small changes that I made. GX. So now I'm going to make uh, some more stuff. I'll go back over to edge selection. One for front view. Sorry, three for right view. And I'm going to select some of the edges here along the back. I'm going to click on, I think I'll start there. Check out the one on the outside. Cool. Three for right view. Hold on the control key. And I'm going to click about here. I'm going to hit GZ. Pull that down. There we go. Let's make it look a little rounder. Maybe I could have gone further. Undo. I'm going to go all the way over here. Hold down control key. And this one right here. GZ. Pull that down. Uh, there we go. I can pull these down here individually as well. GZ. And then make sure that you don't go too far where the uh, this vertex is going to touch that vertex there. And pull this one down individually. There we go. And then these here, I'm going to pull back. G. There we go. And I'm going to select these here and bring them up as well. I get the right one there. Nope. So I'm going to deselect that one. Hold on control key and select this one here. There we go. Three for right view. Let me get one more over here. Hold on shift. There we go. G, Z. Pull that up. There we go. And I can pull this one back here as well vertex selection just pull this one individually back like that all right back to edge selection i'm gonna select the ones in the belly here select that one and control key there we go gz there we go i want to pull these down some more here control gz there we go so by pulling this one down further, I got this uh, other point here. So I'll fix that in a bit. I can also decide to just individually bring these up higher here. GZ. And you bring these back down a bit. GZ. And go through for right view. Cool, it's looking rounder. I'll fix that one later. Let me pull these back here. GY. 
Now I'm going to select some edges here on the rear. Select that one. Put my control key and I go down to this leg. GY, flat inward. Cool. All right, so I'm going to go over to vertex selection and just look for things that don't look right. This one right here is not looking too good. It's kind of low. See, it's like kind of indentation there. So I'm going to GZ, pull that up. There we go. Looks better. I see this nice flow right there. This one is kind of high, GZ. There we go. I'm going to pull a lot of these down here. GZ. All right. Looks good there. Check it out from here. I want the uh, the rib cage stick out a little bit more. GX. Well, then I gotta pull that out one out two. GX. All right. The head. I'm thinking maybe it's a little too narrow. So I'm gonna go back to face selection and select these faces here. And I don't like that now. Or it looks like I ruined it there. So I'm gonna pull these out a bit. That's some more key. I'm gonna go all the way over here. G, it's gonna freehand it. There we go. I don't want it to look like this. I'll pull it back a little bit. Right, I'm liking that better. Go back to vertex selection. I'm bringing this forward. Three for right view. G for grab. Put it back over there. There we go. I like that better. There you go. Bring this one back here. Three for right view. G for grab. And this one too. There we go. Uh, this looks here really narrow, so I'm going to select some of these. I selected that one. Hold on, control. I'm going to click on this one here. GX. Move it over to the right. There we go. Make sure you don't overlap your match, your mesh, so you don't want to go way out there like that, right? All right. You can even select these individually here, just to make the head a little broader in that area. Should have hit control on that one. All right. GX. All right. Originally, I brought those way out there so that when I move this face in, it gives you more wiggle, more wiggle room. I right, cool. I'm liking that. Maybe do I bring this one in? Just a tad. And I can leave that one in there like that. Cool. I can even bring these out here too. I'm going to skip that one there. GX. Make the face a little wider. Oh, this one too. GX. A little more three dimensional. Let me bring this one up higher. There we go. And maybe should I bring that one down? I'll leave it like that. Or I can bring this one out too. That looks weird. Put it back. Undo. All right, looking good. So now I'll make an ear. So here will probably be there. Let me bring in the uh, the picture. There it is. Yeah, so it's about there. So I can try using this whole space here to make the ear. That's going to be really wide. See, the ear is kind of not as wide there. So if you already have the geometry there for the ear, if you want to create a face in here for the ear, that's fine. You can leave it as is. If not, you can hit Control R to create a new loop. So I'm going to put it there. Left click once, and it's going to need to move it over to the right. And left click about there. All right. So now I can select this face here to make an ear of this one. But if I select this one, it's going to fuse over with the other side over here. I can select this one, but it's kind of too far out. Uh, another thing I can do, I can use the uh, the knife tool. I can just draw uh, the edges there for wherever I want them. So I'm going to K for knife. And I'm going to left click here. I'm going to go about right there, left click. And then go about there, left click there. Now enter, and cool, it's committed to that cut, made a new spot there for the ear. The ear looks a little wider there, so maybe I'll select these two here. Oops, that one, that one. G, and then forward this way, GY. There we go, I'm gonna go to face selection. I'm gonna select that one face there. Uh, I got an issue here too. See this vertex there is kinda just floating. I need something to support it, so I'd have good geometry. I'm gonna click on this one here. Hold on the shift key, click on that one. 
I'm going to hit J. It's going to add a, an edge there, and it's going to be on the mesh, J. There we go. All right. Now that's good. Good modeling there. I don't got some random vertex. It's just out there in the open. Ready for right view. E to extrude and pull out to about where the ear is, about right there. And then I'm just going to hit S for scale. Scale it along every axis. S for scale. There we go. G for grab. Pull it forward a bit. There we go. Cool. So on the front here, it looks kind of weird. So I'm going to G for grab. Pull it out. There we go. Now to make some giant monster ears. So it's going to be a donkey. And it might, kind of, it might look like horns, but that's all right. It's a little poly animal. Shouldn't be too bad. All right, now I'm going to make the tail. And go over here. And it looks like this face right here is for the tail. Let me see. I selected it there. Three for right view. Yep, that's the face there for the tail. You stay here in right view. Uh, you want to be careful. Stay in right view. E to extrude. About that much there. And then S for scale along every axis. G for grab, put it down around there. R for rotate. Oops, I had the wrong key. R for rotate. There we go. And I don't know if you can still see my screencast. There we go. S for scale some more. R for rotate. E to extrude, about there. G for grab. R for rotate. So I'm going to scale out here a bit. There we go. E to extrude there. R for rotate. Oops. R for rotate. G for grab. And make it wider. It's like a, I'm just going to make it wider along the S that time. Sorry, along the Y. S Y. G for grab. R for rotate. Noticing um, I'm not getting that uh, that part there. It's all right. I'm just going to freehand it here and down like right there. G for grab. R for rotate. And then E to extrude again. It's like it flares out here a bit. It's going to try to make it wider. Or I can go down too. Make it a little wider then. That's for scale. All right. So it's going to be a really wide looking tail. Yeah. See, there it is. Let me hide the, the picture there. All right. Tail looks super wide. So what I can do, I can select these faces here. Select that one. Hold on. Shift. And oh, not that one. All right. I'm going to hit GX. Bring it in. And make sure those don't touch there. That looks better. Three for right view. And I continue using the image as reference, or I can just kind of do my own thing. So what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to go to vertex selection. Shift Z for wireframe. Select this one here. S for scale and just bring that one in. There we go. Drag select those there. And see how that looks. Shift Z. And I think that looks better there. I can even select these here, fill them up like that. That looks like a better tail. Or I can select these here before I view and do that as well. I'll just leave it like that, similar to the image. So not exactly, but similar to the image there. All right, cool. Let me hide the image again. Let's do that in the, in, in the outliner here. Just close the eyeball. All right, so I want to clean on my mesh. I'm going to hit A to select all. So there might be a chance I might have extruded uh, more than enough. If you're wondering why this part is not selected, it's the mirror. So I just hit A and I selected the whole thing that I've been working on. So whatever I do here, it's going to affect the other side. All right, I'm going to so hit A, select everything. That way the cleanup applies to everything. I'm going to go up here to mesh. And then go down to cleanup. At first, I'm going to select delete loose. That's going to delete any uh, possible vertices that are floating out in space. And it tells me right here what got deleted. So nothing got deleted. It's just vertices, edges, or faces not connected to anything. So I got rid of those. And now I'm going to hit A again to select everything. So make sure the whole thing is glowing every time you go up here. Because every time you use one of those tools, it deselects it. Mesh, cleanup. And now degenerate, dissolve. Degenerate, dissolve will get rid of any unnecessary edges or vertices or faces there. All right, so nothing got removed there. All right, cool. So this time I say selected mesh, clean up. Make sure not to choose uh, decimate geometry. That's something else. Let's see if, what happens there. All right, nothing happened there. I'm going to undo it just in case something did happen. I didn't see it. So don't choose that one. Make sure you choose a degenerate dissolve. All right, and not limited dissolve. That's something else as well. So I'm going to work my way down. I'm going to go over to merge by distance. It's going to get rid of uh, any possible extra extrusions. 
Feed generate dissolved that as well. Got rid of extra, any extra possible extrusions. And merge by distance will also merge any uh, vertices that are on the same space. All right, zero got merged. Still select it all, mesh, clean up, and now fill holes. In case I have any holes in there, any faces that are not filled in, I'm gonna fill them in now. All right, I don't know if anything got filled in. Looks good. By default, it's only gonna fill in faces with uh, four vertices or three, three vertices. So trays or quads, it'll fill uh, anywhere where it sees that possible. If you want to fill in faces, possible faces that could have more uh, edges, more vertices, you can increase this number here down there in this menu. All right, so that cleanup part is done. Uh, a to select all. I'm gonna go over to flip normals. So sometimes with modeling, you might have a face that's inside out. So see there's the inside of the horse here too. And there might be a face here that's supposed to be facing inward inside of the mesh and not out. So to do that, make sure everything's selected A and hit shift in recalculate normals and it does it for you there there's a menu here too I'll just leave that alone so now just make sure um, any face supposed to be on the outside is on the outside all right tab key and there you go your horse is modeled now we just got to color it we're here in materials click on new go down here to base color i'm going to try to make a brown but first i need to go to render so i can see my color here rendered Render viewport shader, let it load up. There we go. So I'm gonna call, uh, name this brown. In there. Base color to make a brown. You're gonna go over here in the red and the oranges. It was kind of brownish, not brown enough for me. And I'm gonna go down here to value. Inside the color wheel, this is vertical bar right here. Just bring it down and get a more brown color. There we go. So you can leave it as is at that color. Or you can give it some socks or change the color of the tail. I'm hit three for right view. Tap key for edit mode, go to face selection, shift Z for the wireframe. I'm going to drag select the bottom of the feet here. Maybe go up a little higher, hold on shift, drag select there, there we go. And I'm going to make those white, and it's going to make it on the mirror side as well. Plus sign, new, and type in white. And the base color is already uh, whitish. We'll go to hex codes right here, and change this hex code here to a bunch of Fs, and that's white. Enter. All right, I'm going to click Assign. It'll make them white. I can't see it because it's in the solid viewport shader. So I'm going to Shift Z. And then it's still be hard to see because it's selected. We can see it there on the mirror side. All right, maybe I want to add a, a white spot up here too. Select these two faces. Click on white here, then Assign. You want to get this Assign button here in edit mode. So that looks, that looks good. And maybe I'll make the tail a darker color. Then like a black, and I'll make the hoops black as well. Three for right view. Shift Z for wireframe, and drag select the tail there, drag select there, small section there, and I got all those faces that are selected. So plus sign, new, and I'll just make like a really dark brown. That's almost black. Let's see. All right, dark brown. Now I'll make a black instead for the for the who's there. Assign. All right, so dark brown there. Cool. Uh, maybe a little darker. There we go. And then I get the hooves down here. Shift Z. Drag select the hoof part. There we go. Hold on. Shift. Drag select. Boom. Plus sign. New. And just make that black. In here and just bring the value all the way down. Assign. Shift Z for the solid. There we go. Tab key. Cool, there we go. Low poly horse. It's ready to go. That's a zero for camera view. Cool, fits inside my camera frame. I'm going to bring in a cylinder to make a little uh, base for it. Shift A, mesh, uh, cylinder. There we go. S to Z, make it super thin. There we go. That's good enough. Three for right view. G, Z, pull it down, put on the feet here of the horse. There we go. Oh, GZ right there. Shift Z. There you go. Then the wireframe. And I'm going to make it wider. I'm going to make it bigger along every axis except for the Z. So just Y and X. So it's going to be S, Shift Z, and just pull the mouse away. Make a nice base there for the horse. Cool. I have this graphics card issue, so I got to get a little bit of that right there. I turn it off. 
Now, if you want to make a little baby horse, little horse buddy, you can just duplicate this one. Shift the X and scale it down. That's for scale. GZ. For right view. Shift Z. GZ. Pull it down right there. Bam. Shift Z. There we go. And we uh, rotate it here in top view. G for grab. A little closer there. There we go. See for camera view. They're both in there. Uh, if you want to bring in an HDRI file, a background picture, you can go to hrihaven.com. Right here, hrihaven.com. Click on HDRIs and find a cool background image. Something that looks where a horse would be. Maybe not inside of uh, this building here. Something outdoorsy. Something with grass. This one is cool. Something with dirt. Something flat. Or maybe they're at the beach. Uh, is that one cool? That one looks cool. Uh, I think I'm going to go with uh, somewhere. It doesn't look too rough for the horse. That's going to have some nice clouds there. I'll go with that one there. Dirt bike track. I don't think a horse would be there. So anyways, I already downloaded one earlier. So I downloaded it and I put it on the desktop. So I'm going to go over here to World. And then to the right of color, I'm going to click on the rivet here. And then Environment Texture. And then Open. And then I have one on my desktop here. Scroll down. Make sure I ballroom, not not a ballroom. Delta, I think that one's like a, has a body of water in there somewhere. Sunflowers, I'm gonna go with that one. I'm gonna go with sunflowers right here. And give it a few seconds to load. There it is. Cool, That's maybe I don't want this plane there. Or the, sorry, the cylinder smashed down on the platform. Close the eyeball on that. There's my graphics card issue. All right, there we go. And look for a good view for this horse, for these horses. There we go, looks good right there. Control alternate enter. Control alternate zero, sorry, control alternate zero. Cool, it looks like they're on the ground right there. That looks good. So I can leave it like that. So they're thinking about crossing. Maybe the occlusion. All right. And then have 12 and you can render your image there. So uh, that's it. Low poly horse. Oh, I forgot to hide the plane from render. So you want to leave the plane there, and it comes out on the render. You're going to go up here on the filter icon on the outliner, and click on this camera icon right here for render. So now you have a new filter there. So I want to hide that cylinder from the render, just in case the empty pops up, hide that from the render as well. So click on these cameras here. It will not pop up in the final render, which is right here. So I hit F12 again, and this time it won't have it there. And let it load. And it should not have the... Uh, that right there. There it is. Bam. Cool. I can also play around with it. Maybe move the horses closer to here. But there it is. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.